Do you know why? There's nothing more contagious than laughter. My line. There's nothing more contagious than laughter. These videos are not for children. If you are a children, then piss off. Hey there, I'm V Infuso. And in the past on this channel, I briefly spoke about Cameron Monaghan's portrayal of the Joker. He was without a doubt the best Joker we've ever had. Mm -hmm. Because he was everything. He brought that same energy and intensity to like this role that Mark Hamill does when he gets on the microphone. This kid understood the character probably better than anybody who's ever performed it before. And today, I'm here to expand upon that. Now, this video is being made right before I rewatch the entire Gotham series for other videos on this channel. This way, I can cover it in vivid detail. So, this video is being made up entirely from my own memory of watching the show the first time around. And also, what I may or may not have researched online. I say this now because there's a decent chance that eventually this topic will be brought up again on this channel. So, there you go. When Gotham first came out, all the promotions and trailers showcase some of the top villains in Batman's rogues gallery. You had the Pang one, the Riddler, and they even teased the possibility of Two-Face. Some of the biggest names in all of Batman lore. Though there was one that was suspiciously missing. Arguably Batman's greatest foe, and potentially could be seen as his driving factor, the clown prince of crime himself, the Joker. None of the ads showed the Joker. At first, the character was left under a veil of mystery, but we were told that he existed in this canon to some degree. Now, initially, the showrunners publicly stated that the Joker would be heavily referenced throughout the show. As opposed to them just presenting the Joker, they were giving the power to the show's audience and allowing them to choose who they felt exemplified the Joker the best. It was basically the choose-your-own-adventure of Batman lore. You see, there wouldn't just be one direct Joker. Instead, there would be a bunch of minor characters created that could potentially become the Joker. And it was up to everybody watching to ultimately decide who the real deal was. And I actually really enjoyed that concept. It was an interesting and different way of portraying the Joker. And I think knowing the Joker character, it was a smart decision creatively as well. Because this Gotham was an origin story. We were learning about the younger lives of all of our characters. And the Joker, as... Anybody who's ever read a comic or, or seen The Dark Knight at some point in life will tell you that the Joker is more a concept than he is a character. I'm an idea. State of mind. Unlike the vast majority of Batman villains who all have these redeemable humanizing qualities, the Joker has none. And any time that we're shown a human side to the character it's pretty much retcon that he might just be full of shit. The guy's a sociopath. He could read anybody like a book, and he plays upon people's vulnerabilities and weaknesses. Case in point, Harley Quinn. To say that the Joker's an unreliable narrator is kind of an understatement. So the fact that they would reference this character and not give him an established backstory was awesome for me. It made me feel like the people who were running this show really understood the character. However, as you're about to learn, it wasn't creative integrity that stopped them from using the Joker. To their credit, the show did go with their initial idea. On multiple occasions in the show's first season, there was a potential Joker. The first episode of the show had a nervous comedian, who could very easily be the Joker plucked from the Killing Joke story. There was a very familiar sinister laugh played in the background during scenes at Arkham. So, you know, there were Easter eggs. They, they, they were true about that. I mean, granted, they did initially say that there would be a Joker in every episode, and, and that wasn't the case. It was more like every couple episodes, there was, there was a possibility of one. But, you know, I was satisfied nonetheless. Why not just include the Joker? I mean, yeah, creatively, I guess this kind of works out, but you mean to tell me that they're not going to use the biggest villain in all of Batman history? He even has his own movie. It's a license to print money. You mean to tell me? That they're not going to use the Joker officially? He's the most famous criminal in all of Gotham City. He's a big name. He probably put some butts in seats. And honestly, how, how does anybody even make a Batman product without the Joker? Comic book writers sure as hell don't know how to do that. So why not use him? 
Well, the answer isn't all that complicated. Simply put, they couldn't. They straight up couldn't. You see, the show did have Warner Brothers owned characters in it, but it was a series that was made by Fox, meaning that Fox didn't have access to the entire DC universe. Basically, an agreement was made that there were certain characters the show just couldn't use. And at the tip top of that list was, you guessed it, the Joker. So this whole choose your own Joker was a cop out to appease Batman fans and to still abide by Warner Brothers rules and regulations. Pretty sneaky, sis. Cameron Monaghan of Shameless fame was contracted to guest star on an episode of the show. He's basically signed on to be another throwaway you know who. Just some nobody who one day may be a somebody. Except the thing was, he was good. Like, like, like really good. Maybe even a little bit too good. <laughs> Looks like the bitch got me with a zinger in the end. Been banging a clown. The next one! You know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're gonna need a lot more of this! <laughs> Fans of the show immediately flocked his portrayal of the character. You were quite the showman. Thank you. Always nice to be appreciated. And he was very quickly proclaimed the real deal in a sea of imposters. I'm also sure it didn't help matters that the marketing for this episode spoiled the reveal and heavily implied that he was the series' official version of this character. But even if nobody saw those, any Batman fan could tell you that this was a clown without his face paint. Jerome Valesco was very much the Urkel of Gotham. God, I, I, I can't escape that kid. I just, I, all the time. He just always comes up. It's nothing to do. He just keeps coming up. His mere presence revitalized the series. And it brought a whole lot of new eyes to the product. This isn't an exaggeration. Those who weren't paying attention to Gotham pre-Jerome were heavily invested post-Jerome. <laughs> Post Jerome. Why does my mind work like this? And those who were already paying attention to Gotham became obsessed. This was a big deal. You know, I'll even go out of my way to say that there were a lot of people who were genuinely beginning to enjoy Jerome more than they were the rest of the show. Which really has to be seen as a compliment because the show was fine without him. So, slowly but surely, the show began to embrace that. After coming out of the crazy closet in his debut episode, you know, what with admitting to murdering his nagging mother, the madness was only then further amplified in his follow-up appearances. The performance Cameron gave really blew me away, and it is in my personal opinion that he is perfect in this role. That is not to jest the wonderful clowns who have come before him. I mean, I love Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix as the character, but both of those seem to be a reinterpretation of the original character. And they're great. I really do enjoy new takes on old characters. And those two had phenomenal performances. But Cameron here, Cameron is just straight up playing the Joker. And, and look, I, I know this might be one of my controversial takes here, but I, I'll say it. He's up there with Mark Hamill for me. Just, just his tone, the inflection in his voice, his mannerisms, the way that he goes about everything. Everything about this performance is everything I ever wanted to see in a Joker performance. I'm sensing anger. You killed Saracen. I used to be a great whistler. <laughs> Give me an O. Jerome, come on. I'm gonna kill you. Of course. But first, I'm gonna drive you mad. <sighs> Give me a smile. <laughs> I mean, seriously, his laugh, his movements, everything about this is the Joker. And yet, legally, he couldn't be. The character could never actually become the Joker despite very blatantly already being the Joker. Sure, he didn't use the Joker name, and yeah, he didn't have green hair or bleached white skin, but come on now, that is the guy! 
That's our man right there. I, I can identify him out of any lineup. That's the man, officer. And the inevitable only became more and more obvious with the passing of time. Season by season, they were just furthering the perception. Jerome's wardrobe reflected the Joker's various wardrobe changes. His face was cut off, as was the Joker's in some comics that I choose not to acknowledge. He started using Joker gas. He was given his trademark grin. Guy began recreating famous Joker poses. Hell, he even began quoting the Joker. We all could go insane with just one bad day. Not to mention, he was just freely giving his card out like who the hell he was. Even though the show wants to claim that he isn't, this man was the Joker in everything but name. How they somehow managed to dodge enough lawsuits to be able to complete the show is beyond me. The brand flat out told you no. And you thought, well, I don't know. I, I feel like there's a little bit of a gray area there. Can't you do something? Afraid not. I am with Mr. Valeska 100%. The show managed to cover their own ass. By insisting that Jerome wasn't actually the series version of the character, he was its predecessor. The precursor to the actual Joker. They even killed him off for a time being, and began a cult in his name. Which I have some mixed feelings about. See, I like the concept of the Joker having followers of sorts. It fits the narrative of Joker being a concept rather than the character. I'm an idea. He is a madness that creates more madness in its wake. Joker is an absolutely awful, irredeemable character, but he is strangely charismatic and his presence is otherworldly. So I can absolutely buy into other people following in his footsteps. Batman Beyond comes to mind, where years after the Joker's disappearance, there's still an entire gang called Jokers causing chaos in his name. However, I don't really buy this concept when it's altered like this. Insisting that the Joker, the actual Joker, is actually some nutjob trying to recreate someone else's crimes, it really diminishes the character. Joker isn't the character to take the torch. He's the one who lights it and then burns down your living room. He's not some no-name copycat. There's a reason he's so reviled and infamous. It's because Gotham City has never seen a force like him before. And that's saying something, because Gotham City is a city filled with icemen, furries, Scalies, a dude who commits crimes and then tells you how he did it. I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> Even given that climate, Joker still stands out amongst the rest. Having the Joker as a follower goes against everything the character stands for, and it lessens his importance and the overall impact he has on Harley Quinn, and on Batman, and on Gotham. But to the show's credit, I think they did realize this at some point in time. And if it wasn't that, and if they didn't realize their own creative faults when reworking the origin of the character, then they just understood that Gotham fans wouldn't settle for anything less but Cameron Monaghan in the role. Even if he's not technically the Joker, his performance is still the closest we've ever come to the character in live-action form. So he was brought back, and he continued to be presented as the show's answer to the character. All while the show executives continued to deny he was the clown in question. Cameron really hit it out of the park with his guest appearances on the show, and it seemed all but inevitable that one day, e even if we don't get to see it because, you know, agreements won't let us, it seemed inevitable that he was Joker-bound. If only that was the fucking case. And right about here's where I'll be stopping this episode, because this is truly a story that needs to be told in two parts. Some of you may know, I died. Uh-oh. Hang on to your hats, folks, because you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> You're a splatter broski! <laughs> no, you won't. If you wanted him dead, you would have killed him already. <laughs> He's right. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Just when you thought it was safe to log back into YouTube. Hello, Gotham. Joker's back in town. <laughs> hey there, I'm the Infuso. And you know, they say that a man can go mad with just one bad day. Well, I'm coming back from two bad months, so just imagine where I am. No, 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 please hold your applause. I'm happy to be back. I, I know plenty of you are because 
You certainly let me know that you were pissed off that I was gone, which is both very flattering and also irritating. It's been a rough few weeks. Now, I previously spoke on this channel about how I felt about Cameron Monaghan's time on Gotham. I don't want to spoil anything here for you, but the name of that video was Gotham Had the Best Joker. So, figure out what side of the fence I'm on just from, from that. And that's because I truly felt that the performance that Cameron put in is without a shadow of a doubt the most authentic live-action Joker ever to live-action. Very poor choice of words. <laughs> but I think a couple of you may have gotten it confused. Because I've read through the comments, and everyone's claiming that I'm putting Cameron over Hamill, and that's complete blasphemy, but I I'm not. I'm specifically talking about live action here. Mark Hamill is the Joker. There there there's, there's no disputing that. And if you try to, well then, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to say somebody's opinion is wrong, but, but yours is wrong, and I don't like you. As a person. And we will never be friends. And while Mark Hamill perfectly personifies the Joker and brings to life what I believe is one of the most sinister and iconic performances in all of movie and TV villainy, I truly feel that Cameron brought that same kind of spirit and energy to the physical end of the role. I think he brings that same kind of passion and intensity when he's on screen. You know, that is until he didn't. But but hold on, we're gonna get there, okay? Just 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 bear with me here. And also, I keep getting comments, how could I dare put Cameron's performance over Heath Ledger and, and Joaquin Phoenix. And again, I explained that in the last video, but for the cheap seats, I'm, I'm gonna do it again. Also, I, I think probably a lot of you just read the title and then, and then, then dipped, you, you, just, you just got the fuck out of there. Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix both put on some of the most unique and incredible performances anybody in uh, cinematic history in face paint has ever put on. There's no taking anything away from them. Their individual performances were brilliant, and they really left a lasting impression on movie history and pop culture as a whole. These are roles that will be remembered in the comic book movie genre for generations to come. As a matter of fact, I would say both of their careers are probably largely going to be defined, maybe not exclusively for those roles, but largely those roles. They are fantastic performances. But again, I felt that each of them are reinterpretations of what the Joker was. Whereas Cameron, when he was on screen, kind of just portrayed the character from the comic books. And I also got a lot of comments from uh, avid comic book fans telling me I don't know what I'm talking about because there's no way that, that Cameron could portray the Joker perfectly when, when, when this is a made-up backstory. This is nothing like the Joker from the comics. And again, guys, I was talking specifically and solely about his performance. I didn't say that the background of the character is just like the comics, that that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the performance itself. The performance. What he brought to screen. That is what we are talking about. Just so we're clear. I also read a lot of people saying that Cameron is simply duplicating Heath Ledger's time in the role. And no. I mean, yeah, I guess they have similar sounding voices, I'll give you that. But all you've done is mope for the last Six weeks. Why so serious? Hiya, Pops. Long time. No see. <laughs> I thought my jokes were bad. But his inflections are much closer to resembling Mark Hamill's, and his physical mannerisms seem to reflect Jack Nicholson. To me, discrediting him because he sounds like Heath Ledger is like discrediting Christian Slater in any movie he's ever been in because he sounds like Jack Nicholson. Chaos is great. Chaos is what killed the dinosaurs, darling. Fine. Why don't you start right now and get the fuck out of here? I'm a little tired of people accusing me of doing Jack Nicholson. It's not the same performance. It's just not. And honestly, that's why I like Cameron so much. I think that he takes the right elements from several different, well-established Joker performances and combines them together for a really effective take on the Joker lore. And to everyone in my comment section telling me that he was one of the worst Jokers and he was the cringiest of all time, well, it seems like your favorite Joker disagrees with you. So shut up. Okay, so now, with that out of the way, let's pick things back up. While I appreciate the show Gotham very, very much, I will admit that it doesn't come without its faults. One really strange tired TV trope it seems to keep on going with is the evil twin. You know the one. The one where we find out that there's an alternate version of a character that we already know and love. 
or in some cases, hate. And yeah, I mean, there's plenty of storylines already established within the DC universe that kind of play on that. You know, you have your standard uh, uh, hushes, you got your bizarros, but Gotham, instead of deciding to choose from that well, decide to pour from its own creative faucet. It's discovered that Bruce Wayne has his own clone. And no, it's not Thomas Elliot. Riddler has a love interest who gets killed off. But it's alright, because, you know, she's got a lookalike somewhere. It's, it's, it's gonna be okay. Same actress in everything. It's fine. And Jerome literally had a previously undiscussed identical twin brother named Jeremiah. No joke. Unlike Jerome, Jeremiah was depicted as being sane. You're insane. Yeah. And putting his intellect to good use. Allegedly, Jeremiah was removed from Jerome's life at the request of his mother, who believed that Jerome wanted to shatter his mirror image. And considering we're talking about the kid who would go on to kill his own mother, yeah, I'd say that's a pretty believable claim. Yeah, it seems like there's a little validity there. Except, according to Jerome, it was Jeremiah who made all those stories up about him, causing their family to become abusive toward him in Jeremiah's absence. Long story short, after a brief family reunion and some torture, you know how those things go. Jerome takes his final leave from the series, but not before leaving his brother with a parting gift, dosing him with a severe supply of Joker venom. Oh, uh, well, well, I mean, legally, they're not allowed to call it that, but yeah, that, that is what it is. As you can imagine, this has some internal as well as external effects. On top of that, I must ask, what's up with this new makeover? Uh, what are you doing? Are you cosplaying as Data from Star Trek? That's a bad choice. He's one of the worst jokers out there. Always wanted to carve this bird. <laughs> another day? Another day! There won't be another day! Not for any of us! <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, Brent. I really enjoy y your body of work, but please keep your body away from Batman. The way their stories are set up, it still never really delivers an answer to the show's audience. Who's the real victim and who's the real victimizer? Who drove the other mad? Who made who? It's a question that really only continues to show its layers as time goes on. It's like an onion. That's right. I've seen Shrek once. It's a real uh, chicken or the egg scenario. From a storytelling standpoint, I'd say this still fits the Joker's aesthetic. Because even when we're told his backstory, it's still somehow shrouded in mystery and multiple choice. However, what I enjoy significantly less is Cameron's time as Jerome's last minute replacement. And yes, before everybody wants to come at me in the comments, I'm very well aware it's the same actor. However, what it's not is the same performance. Jeremiah is not just a tired rehash of Jerome. Actually, if he was, I might like him a little bit better. While yes, he does effectively take over his legacy, he goes about it in his own way. There have been many, many different portrayals of the Joker, and the show borrowed heavily from several. Whether it was his attire, his aesthetic, or, or plot points... But in terms of overall character, Jerome was Gotham's version of the insane Joker, the anarchist. Jeremiah, on the other hand, was Gotham's version of the super sane Joker, the one who led a life of organized crime. Jeremiah spoke in a constantly calm, mortifyingly monotone way that could unsettle a monk years deep in meditation. He acted very matter-of-factly, and he always seemed control in any given situation he was in, even if he wasn't. The character didn't have the personality or the pizzazz that his infamous brother did. Let me just say that this version of the character isn't entirely without its charm. Yes, he clearly couldn't fill his brother's clown shoes, but Cameron is great as always. This secondary interpretation, while not necessarily ideal for me, was at least truthful to a separate source material for the character. Jeremiah's look was a lot more similar to the more traditional Joker look, so fans of the natural pale skin and colorful outfits could rejoice. However, I really really have a hard time getting behind a character that's called the Joker and having it portrayed as a humorless psychopath. It's just, I, maybe they were trying to go for irony? Hashtag, not my Joker, come at me. Jeremiah was shown to have a proxy who devoted her entire life to him, a woman who went by the name of Echo. So of course it's only natural that she basically become the series equivalent to Harley Quinn. But, you know, legally distinct. She was hopelessly, relentlessly devoted to a maniac who always had his own best interest at heart. That is, if, if he even had a heart. The scenes Echo and Jeremiah share are fantastic. And I think that they're the real silver lining of the last-minute twin magic the show decided to pull off. 
undoubtedly the highlight of Jeremiah's time as the Clown Prince of Crime was the dynamic between these two. You have to remember, viewers went into this show thinking that they would never see a Joker. So who could have guessed that we not only would have gotten two of them, but also a Harley Quinn thrown in for good measure? There wasn't a whole lot of time devoted to their background, but there was enough time to understand their relationship and appreciate what the show created. Another thing the series did was give both Jerome and Jeremiah a connection to Bruce Wayne. Both brothers interacted, took an interest in, and even had an obsession with the young billionaire. Jeremiah even on occasion referred to Bruce as his very best friend. And yes, that is a very Joker mentality. Those not in depth with the lore may just think that Joker is Batman's arch enemy. He's the maniacal clown who constantly is trying to kill our dear Dark Knight. But that's actually not the case. The Joker doesn't want to kill Batman. He wants to break him. In his sick mind, the two of them are opposing pieces of the same puzzle. And the Joker is really just desperate in trying to get him to see things his way. And if you think I'm blowing smoke, then here, take the performance that you guys are all fucking beating me over the head with in the comments section. Then why do you want to kill me? <laughs> I don't, don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? You complete me. Oh look, he almost said that exact thing. Let him die a little sooner than the rest of the city. Wait, we've been having fun stabbing him. Hitting him, emotionally torturing him. I don't want it to end. <laughs> Choose one to live and one to die. Free the bat! Drop the broad! Of course, in the comics, it is in fact Batman and Joker, and not Bruce Wayne and Jeremiah Valeska. But seeing as these are this series' counterparts for those characters, works pretty well. The dynamic is definitely there. And there's a good enough chemistry between these two actors that you buy into it. I think what I really enjoy the most is that despite Jeremiah's twisted ways, Bruce still seems hell-bent on trying to help him. And that... that's Batman. Batman doesn't kill his enemies. He tries to rehabilitate them. Even if by society standards, there, there is no help for them. And maybe he's a little bit misguided in what he's doing, but you always know that Bruce has the best interest and good intentions at heart. It's almost like these two are constantly fighting trying to convert the other into their own way of thinking. This is the most physical spirited debate that I've ever seen in all of my years. Jeremiah acted significantly different from Jerome, but even in saying that he wasn't a complete contrast to the Joker character. While I don't think he was spot on as Jeremiah, he did aesthetically resemble the character a lot more. His mentality and level of unnatural calmness in any and all given situations certainly highlighted some of the character's more sinister ways. Jeremiah always seemed to have a trick up his sleeve. He had contingency plans A through Z. While Jerome operated purely off anarchy and destruction. Personally, I felt this version of the character hit a little too close to characters like Hannibal Lecter and Antoine Chigurh. Probably not saying that right. I, I, I don't think I ever have. But then again, I'm, I'm probably not saying Cameron Monaghan's name right. So, I, so why, why are you subscribed to me? I do enjoy Cameron's time as Jeremiah. But I don't think he could really hold a candle to his previous incarnation of the character. Cameron did well with what he was given. The problems with Jeremiah don't stem from the actor portraying him, but instead the show that created the role. When I personally think of the Joker, I think of a larger-than-life personality that doesn't ask for, but demands, the attention of all those in attendance. Simply by being in attendance. That, to me, is the Joker. And that, to me, is Jerome Valeska. I don't think Jeremiah was as brain-dead of an idea as others do, but I do at least have to question it a bit. The fact that viewers of the series sat by for four years eagerly awaiting Jerome's ultimate transformation, only to be given a brand new guy with his face feels really, really cheap. I just don't see the Joker as some humorless psychopath who rarely cracks a smile. I just don't know if Jeremiah had the... I don't know if he had the... I don't know if he had... Flair? Huh? Style? Class? Huh? Go on, boy, spit it out, I can take it. And apparently I'm not alone in this thought process either. Because I went to the Vigenerates, and I decided to ask them this very question. And Jerome won by a landslide, no competition. <sighs> Jerome beat me, and that'll be the day. <laughs> Jerome yet again carrying this whole franchise on its back. And while I can't sit here and say I dislike Cameron's portrayal, it does, again pale in comparison to the show's previously established potential Joker. So why do it? I, why do it? Riddle me that. I wouldn't say Jeremiah was a black mark on the series, 
but he definitely was a very big question mark. So now, ultimately, do I think Gotham had the worst Joker? That being Jeremiah Valeska? No, absolutely not. I will say he definitely was one of the more disappointing ones, but at the end of the day, Cameron was great in both roles. But I kind of feel like replacing Jerome with Jeremiah was kind of like... It was kind of like striking gold and then throwing that gold out because you found a really cool rock. Like, all right, it's nice, I guess, but, but, but how about that gold, though? You know, it's funny. When I first started working on this video, it was with the intention of making it one video. Just one big video detailing the history of the character on the show, as well as my thoughts on it, and maybe I'll throw in a joke here and there. But the more I wrote, the more I realized I had a whole lot to say about it. So now that we covered Jerome in Part 1, we've covered Jeremiah in Part 2, we're on to the final episode in this miniseries where we cover the Joker in Gotham. So with that being said, once again, I'm V Infuso, you are the Vigenerates, and I thank y'all for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. What do you want, Jeremiah? Is that your Jeremiah here? So what do I call you? I don't know, call me... Hey there, I'm V Infuso, and if you're only just now joining me on the final part of this three-part series, I'd highly suggest first checking out my videos Gotham Had the Best Joker and Gotham Had the Worst Joker, in that order. Don't worry, we'll all wait. Take your time, we'll, we'll all be here when you get back. Don't worry about it, go ahead. Alright, great, now that that fucking guy is gone, let's pick back up where we left off. One of the many, 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 many complaints I get on those videos is that I'm clearly wrong. Because Gotham didn't really have the Joker. They didn't have the rights to use that character. Which is why Cameron Monaghan never had green hair and never went by the Joker name. You're not very wrong. And you're half right. Half. While the show did at first not have the rights to the character, and basically had to jump through hoops and be put through the ringer to convince Warner Brothers that they weren't using the character that they were explicitly told not to use, all while also trying to reassure fans of the series that he was in fact the character that they said he wasn't. Naughty, naughty. Of course that wasn't the plan when casting Cameron the first time around, but his performance demanded attention. I wanna be the star of the show! When all was said and done, they did manage to secure the rights to the character for the show's final season. Sort of. Somewhat. Kinda. A deal was made that basically said, Uh, yeah, sure, I guess you can make him the Joker, since you basically already made him the Joker anyway. But, you know, just don't call him the Joker. Cause, cause that, that'll make everybody happy. That'll put a smile on everybody's face. I'm sure nobody's gonna be upset with that turn of events. So to everyone trying to convince me that neither Jerome nor Jeremiah was the Joker, and that they were just some sort of unrelated prelude to that character, need I remind you that Jeremiah literally went through the most famous and accepted Joker origin? The dude fell into a vat of chemicals! I mean, I think it's pretty clear that he was meant to be Gotham's Joker! Plus, Cameron pretty much outright confirmed it, stating that the show is now given certain liberties with this character. So yes, guys, this is Gotham's Joker. Whether you like it, whether you don't, that's what it is. Now in my last video, I was a bit critical of the show's secondary incarnation of the Clown Prince of Crime. And I still stand by all of that. But to be fair, the show did at least up the ante in its final season. Jeremiah did see a further evolution that I will admit comes a lot closer to the Joker of comic book lore than he had been in the previous season. Not as close as Jerome, of course, but still definitely an improvement. The character would also see a secondary transformation, officially becoming the series' non-official Joker. This is not confusing to talk about at all, and I'm sure everybody in the comments section is going to come to one conclusive opinion of this whole ordeal. Now, it's been stated before that the Jeremiah variation of the character took a lot of inspiration from the Dark Knight Returns Joker. So be that the case, it's perfectly fitting that following his accident and Bruce's exit from Gotham City, that just like that version of the Joker, Jeremiah falls into a catatonic state. Or so it seems. Now I know that this version of the character, uh, much like his previous incarnations, is very divisive. But personally, I actually really dig it. The chemicals have burned and discolored his face, making him look much more sinister. 
Whatever humanity could be seen on him before is now completely removed, and that perfectly reflects the character itself. This really helps highlight that this is no longer the character or characters that we once knew. The physical state of Jeremiah now reflects the mental and emotional states of the character. But I will say, and I may sound a little bit hypocritical here considering that I am a bald bearded bastard myself, but I guess I could have gone without the bald joker. Though there were at least some strands of green hair up there, just so the audience could be let in on the fact that this is in fact the joker. Though apparently my comment section didn't get that memo. In all seriousness, a big part of me genuinely likes the look of this character. And in terms of acting, I enjoy this performance a lot, because it to me feels like the perfect amalgamation of both Jerome and Jeremiah. A, a Jerome Amaya, if you will. There was another me too. Oh, so hard holding on to us Rios. <clears throat> it's enough to drive you mad. I really appreciate this version of the Joker. And the fact that he still only hinted at his name, and he only just started to don the clown-like appearance, I think it's more than safe to say Gotham. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> so say what you will about this incarnation of the character, and you certainly have said a lot, but that was Gotham's Joker. But before we go, I have clearly stated my own opinion on which version of the character I personally preferred. And I asked all of you to do the same. And Jerome, once again, won by a landslide victory. But then I thought, hey, what do you people know? I mean, you guys are just, you guys are just a bunch of degenerates. And then I thought further, and I thought, hey, what the hell do I know? I'm just some asshole on the internet. So I'm pretty socially distanced from the content myself. And I can understand if some people think that I'm just too far away from this project to give an informed opinion. And that's why I figured what better way to bring a close to this series than by asking some of the people who are a little bit closer to this project on which Joker they preferred. So without further ado, I give you some of the cast of Gotham giving their informed opinions on the Jerome vs. Jeremiah debate. Hope you enjoy. Hi V, it's Ben. Thank you for the question. And it's a really interesting one. And, you know, one I honestly kind of struggled with. Because, you know, Jeremiah and Jerome are both played by Cameron Monaghan. And um, I will admit, though, that the, the first time that I saw both of them in the same room together, I, I maybe thought they were different actors, just for a split second, but, you know. <laughs> Which is honestly amazing. And honestly, I, Cameron Monaghan is insane. So, anyways, to get back on topic... Um, I think I'd probably have to say that, um, I'm a little more partial to Jeremiah because like, you know, with Jerome, you know, when you first see him, he kind of, you know, starts off crazy. But with Jeremiah, you kind of see that, like, that process, that arc as he gets more and more insane. And I just think that's really interesting and a super fun watch. And again, you know, to sing Cameron's praises a bit more, he does it <laughs> a ton of justice, so... Honestly, um, yeah, I'd probably have to go with Jeremiah. What's up, V? How you doing? V and Fuso, what a cool name you've got. You sound like a Bond villain or something. Uh, it's your old buddy Drew, AKA Butch, AKA Grundy, AKA other things, but I know you're a Gotham guy, so that's all you care about. Um, how you doing? Sending you a bunch of love and health and happiness your way. Hope you and yours are staying healthy in this crazy, pandemic we're living through um appreciate you reaching out and i know you asked me a question who do i like better as joker in gotham jerome or jeremiah and it's a tough question because i think cameron did a great job on both and i think they wrote them both incredibly well but i'm old school guy butch is always old school so i'm gonna go with jerome so that's my final answer although it's pretty close anyway um all my best to you and your family, and thanks for watching. Uh, I love so much that people can still watch on Netflix and that it's still out there in the world and making people happy. So be well, V. Take good care. Till the next time. Bye-bye. What's up, V and Fuso? It's David Mazouz. We're from Gotham. I think some memorabilia around my room should prove that, in case you didn't believe me, that we have this awesome um, painting, I guess. That's painting, drawing, you can call it what you want. Boom, little Batman there. This 
That lamp is, fun fact, from Wayne Manor. That's also from Wayne Manor. These jellyfish, these weird jellyfish things are from Wayne Manor. Ignored the weird lint roller that was also on my nightstand. Um, and of course, of course, we have a collection of Batman. So, now that I've successfully proved to you that I am Bruce Wayne, um, I'd like to give my authoritative opinion on the question of Jerome versus Jeremiah. A classic question, if I do say so myself. Um, so, uh, listen, to be completely honest, V, um, I'm in the Jeremiah, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, I misspoke. I'm in the Jerome camp. I am fully in the Jerome camp. I, you might have been expecting some kind of politically pleasing answer where I say, you know, they both have things that are great and, and they both, you know, have qualities that each will, you know, show, make themselves apparent in the fully realized version of the Joker. But to be completely honest, while that is true, I just prefer the Jerome version of the Joker. And what's cool, now looking back on the Jerome Jeremiah kind of um, thing that we did on Gotham, uh, is with with the new information, uh, with the new information now that we have from the Batman universe, that from the Batman canon, that there are actually three Jokers, um, it's pretty cool to see that... Uh, to see that there have been multiple Joker prototypes in the past as well. Um, I don't know how much the comics you are, but there are three Jokers now. There's not just one Joker, but there's three Jokers, all pretending to be the same one guy. And, um, you know, very similar concept to the Jerome Jeremiah thing. And so it's cool to track back um, how instead of looking at the Jerome and Jeremiah kind of characteristics and qualities as all contributing to one eventual incarnation of the Joker, but all actually being one all one incarnation of the Joker that's that everyone thinks is one incarnation of the Joker, but is really in reality three separate Jokers. Just something to think about. Anyway, hope that answers your question. That's where I stand. Have a great day. I want to say thank you so much to Ben, Drew, and David for answering my questions honestly in those cameos, and I highly recommend checking them all out and ordering a cameo from them yourselves on cameo.com. And, you know, just don't forget to let them know who sent you. With that being said, I'm V Infuso, and I thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. I am vengeance. I am the night, and that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel.